What's up, Mr. Scientific? Hey, what's going on, Jeff? Everyone out there, this is DJ Patrick Scientific. This is the Audio Infusion, and that voice was the man we know as Clever. Jeff, how you doing, buddy? Man, I can't complain. I'm still in the game, you know? Yeah, and you've been in the game for a while, too. Ah, <laughs> It's tough, but, you know, I'm hanging in there. It's my passion. Yeah, and I think a lot of people that did it back in the days did it for the love. Yes, yeah, the love and the passion of making music and, and trying to feed the people. Right. You know. So we're going to do this Skype interview real quick. Thanks, everyone, for listening. First question, Jeff, I have to ask is, how did you get started in making music? Well, for me, it started real early in my life. Stockton, California is where I was born. And it was a band that was two, two houses down from me. And they used to practice in the front yard all the time. And I watched how they practiced. You know, the, the horn section would practice with each other. And then the rhythm section would practice with each other. And they would bring it together. And that taught me a lot. And I was, I was my uncles played guitar. One of them played keyboard. So I was attracted to the bass. And I would sit on the porch and try to play every bass line that came on the radio. And that's how I learned, taught myself to play music. So because I played bass, I wanted to learn the drums. And the guys down the street, one of them was a drummer, one of them was a bass player. They were brothers. And the drummer was like my, like a big brother to me. So I would come over there and try to play his drums. And he would teach me a little bit. But I would ask the guy with the bass more about bass stuff because that's what the instrument I was really into. I was trying to play squib cakes back then by Tower Power. My hands were too small. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. That's really pretty much what got me started making music. I've been doing it since I was a little boy. My mother's a jazz singer, too, so. Oh, so you got music all around you, and then somehow it, the, the urge to try to emulate what you heard around you was there. Yeah, and where I was from, a lot of music was played. You know, a, a lot of kids had bands. Like, I was playing in a band when I was 14 years old. So, you know, we used to be like a cover band for the talent shows. And, okay. uh, you know, so... Yeah, that's, so that's that's why most of my music is all original. If you notice, it's not in sample loops like that. You know, it's pretty much all original music. Okay, we're going to get into that in a, in, a, in a little bit of time. But who are some of the people that inspired your music? For me, uh, Ohio players, Slave, um, you know, Parliament. I mean, all those people that I grew up listening to is is what's inside of me i like all i know is that music you know right when it comes to hip-hop you know I, I started listening to hip-hop when it first came out so you know i i was a fan of Sheila rock i was a fan of uh kumo d i was a fan of uh spoonie g i like spoonie g spoonie g pretty much i figured my our characters were similar okay <laughs> <You know? laughs> the godfather yeah so I used to, I liked him and KRS One, you know, who was in my age group. So, you know, same right. thing. Yeah, that's what's up. Not too many people remember Tila Rock, but he influenced, it's yours. influenced LL. Yeah, he influenced LL Cool J big uh, time. Yeah. Definitely. So, with all that in mind, how many instruments can you play? I know you can do a bunch. Well, I'm just I play bass, and because I can play bass, I play a little bit of guitar, and I dabble on the drums. But because I've been around music so much, I, I, I you know, I can hear all the instruments right you know and that's really what it t takes to be a good producer you have to be able to you know hear the instruments right. and what the, what they're supposed to do even if you can't execute it you know yeah so how have you musically evolved i mean you came you were you're one of the few people that i can say as a 90s mc like a golden era mc mm -hmm. there was a granted there was a bunch out there but you did your thing on your on your initial album so your initial album was Jazz Hot Soul. That was on Q3, Quest Records. I believe. Yeah. yeah. And I, I bought that, and I was really impressed with it. I appreciate that. So how can you say have you musically evolved from Jazz Hot Soul to organic intelligence? Well, Jazz Hot Soul, as you know, I made that record with a guy named Dave G. And what? see, Dave G., we had a really, really good relationship where – all I had to do was come and make the beats and spit the rhyme and leave. And he was such a great engineer. You know, he taught me a lot. He taught me how to engineer. He taught me how to mix just from being around him. He was a good producing engineer. And um, we had a beautiful working relationship. And that's how Jazz Hop Soul came about. You know, I, I, 
I still miss Dave, but from that to organic intelligence, now I do everything, you know, I, I write, I arrange, I mix, I master, you know, so mm-hmm. everything is in house. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't really need to go outside my, my house for anything as far as music is concerned. Okay. That's what's up. So, um, I know you've had a couple of singles in, a be- couple of albums in between. We've played your music on 88.9 on the audio infusion. So with those last albums are, are out there. So what was it like making this one? Like, what was, was there anything different in making this? And generally, what was it like making this latest LP? Well, my process is to make the music first and I'll make the music and, you know, I'll find when I start writing this, the rhymes, usually I, I have the concept of my mind and I just write the rhyme. I don't even know what, what, what music I'm going to put it to yet. The song Organic Intelligence, when I wrote, when I made the beat, I, I wrote the hook at the same time. I didn't even have the, the, the story, the meat of the song. I just had the hook once upon a time. That's all I, that's all I had was once upon a time I had five wives. That's it. And um, I sat on that for a long time because I didn't want to, when I wrote that song, I really wanted it to mean something. You know, right. I kind of I wanted to tell the story and some some people, some people never told that story, you know, and I wanted to make it in layman's term where a child could understand. OK, you know? so it took me a minute to write this song, even though it's a simple song, sounds simple to write. But it was it, just because I wanted to make it. Solid, you know, yeah. I mean, certain songs, I mean, I've never heard. I mean, a lot of times you hear artists that write they'll write like sometimes they'll whip up a song real quick mm-hmm. if they're just like i don't want to say rhyming about nothing but if they're just rhyming mm-hmm. but if you want to make a song and you and you wanted to um put it together um to have like a lasting effect you have mm-hmm. to think about those lyrics yes you know it's funny you say that because the covid 19 song right the the right. corona 1920 i had to write that fast you know, because it was happening. It was it was in real time. And that was the last song to put on the record. And um, that came out of just looking around like, wow, look at this. This is what I think it is. You know, so. And I didn't get a chance to mix it like I wanted to. It was, I mean, there's a lot of stuff about that song that I didn't really get a chance to do. But, yeah, I understand that sometimes you have a deadline and, you know, you, you want to stick to your deadline because if you don't, everything can go out and. You, 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 sometimes you just need to finish a project so you can move on to do something else too. Absolutely. So, granted, you're a fantastic producer and all that. Who would you consider to remix any of the songs on your album? I mean, I've always yeah. liked to see what other people who they would want to remix a song or two. Well, you know, I like Pharrell's production. It's another guy that I was on tour with who, uh, when I when I did the college tour, when I met you, and I did the college tour, the the dude that was a producer for, he was a DJ for the youngsters we and him got real close he was a cool dude and he did some remixes for me for the quest record for uh in the city and man he killed it and they didn't want to put it out and i was upset because that would have turned that would have turned my whole career around at that point now he was from he was from philadelphia his name was manuel if manuel hear this please get in contact with me because manuel was a he had a good ear and i like to work with people that um that i feel you know what i mean right you know, so I like to be able to have a relationship. Guru did a, a, a remix for me back in the day for um, Catch Wreck. And okay. It's funny because I reached out to Premier. I reached out to Pete Rock. I reached out to all these people. And Guru was the only one that called me back. And it was funny because he said, he called me and said, hey, Jeff. I said, hey, what's happening, man? He said, man, I really like what you said on your records. And for me at that time, I was like, man. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate that. <laughs> you know, because I, I appreciated what he was saying on his records. So, right. you know, I really appreciated that. Yeah, I know. Sometimes it's just timing and getting in contact. And it's not like back in the days, I think it was a little harder to get in contact with people. To a certain extent, it's not that hard. Mm-hmm. But the, to the connection of like, actually, um, how shall I say this? Like, because a phone call requires like real time connection. Yes. And that sometimes can be hard because if you're not on the in, in front of a phone and I don't know if 
people had pagers back then, so people I, started. I'm a type of dude. I like to shake your hand. I like to right, feel yeah. you. You know, so then then you could feel me, and then you know, you, then we have a, a certain respect for each other. You know what I mean? And uh, that's one thing I I, I kind of missed out on because a lot of guys I really didn't get to meet, and the guys I did meet. Man, I, I mean, we, we we hit it off like the, the beat nuts, for instance. I met them dudes and they were super cool, you know, and, and just hit it off. Yeah, they're really good producers, too. Yep. So I know you, you I mean, you started in the 90s. So what's it like to be known as like a golden era MC? How does that make you feel? Um, That's a beautiful thing, man. And it's a great question. It's a beautiful thing to be still doing it because you got the passion for it and to still be able to make timeless music. That's my whole end game. It's trying to make music that lasts for long, lasts longer than I do. Right. You know, you know, that's my whole goal is, is, is to bring, bring community back and to make meaningful music. And even when I'm start talking some fly stuff, it's meaningful, you know? Right. I like the way you put that, trying to make music that lasts longer than I do. Mm -hmm. Not too many people are doing that. Well, the music industry has changed. The music industry has tried to create um, prison industrial complex music. And I'm the anti of that. Right. You know, so. Yeah, so we were talking about your um, golden era stuff. Whatever happened to Dave G? Dave G, I miss Dave. Dave, Dave ended up Live, moving off the grid, you know, he's all he's in the mountains. He just left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny thing, I don't know, Dave, I met Dave in Berkeley. Now, how I met Dave was through um, this guy named Tony Gilmore and Mike Marshall. Now, Mike Marshall is the guy that wrote Rumors, and he's a good friend of mine. And uh, I was over there, and they were recording, and that's how I met Dave. I came to the studio, and me and him just hit it off. And that's how Jazz Hop Soul came. We were just playing around. We were just goofing off. He didn't even know I played instruments. He didn't know me like that. Right. And we became like the best of friends and just started making music together. He's like a brother to me, you know. We spent so much time with each other. Right, because I asked that because I remember looking at the credits on... Okay, for the start off, I'm old enough to remember that when you had an album or even an eight track, if you want to go back that far... But a record or a cassette, and even CDs, you had the album liner notes, and to find mm -hmm. out what was going on, who did different things in different songs, you read the credits. Yeah. And I remember Jazz Hop Soul looking at, and I didn't see any samples on there. No, just, we didn't sample. All instruments played by Clever Jeff and Dave G. Yep. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's interesting. Well, the funny thing is, um, we didn't sample. And you know how everybody uses an SP-1200? People, right. don't, people don't even understand when I say this. We didn't have an SP-1200. All we had was an SP-12. And the difference, the SP-1200 has 24 seconds of sampling. The SP-12 has eight. So Jazz Hop Soul was done off of eight seconds of sampling. So all we was taking was snares, kicks, hi-hats, stabs. That's it. I played right. bass lines. He played some of the guitar. That was him on the guitar. Um, you know, uh, we had some of our friends come play trumpets and, and stuff like that. And, you know, we were just experimenting, trying to make, um, trying to do something different. That's what, I, that's what I appreciate about that era of music. Everybody wanted to be different. Yes. And everyone yeah. was different. Yeah. You couldn't get no respect if you sound like somebody else. You just couldn't. I know. That's what I don't want to sound like this, but that's the complaint of a lot of older MCs. Granted, you're an older MC since there's there's the younger people out there today, but the older people say, How is this possible when back in the day when I was making music, I couldn't sound like another person? That was considered whack. Now it's just what people do. Well, He's got word, a hot sound, I'm the, gonna do the same thing. The word was biting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you couldn't bite, you know. Oh, oh man, they'll throw they would throw pennies at you on stage if you did that. I've seen dudes get that happen too, <laughs> you know. And it's also about why you why do you make music? What's what's your end game? What's the reason that you make music? All right, and, you know, for me, um, 
like I said, you know, it's about building people instead of killing people. Um, right. You know, that's my whole deal. But I, what I'm very proud of about this record, Organic Intelligence, and my last four records, um, not not one cuss word in none of them, and they still are very entertaining, and that's I'm proud of that. All right, yeah, yeah. I remember you put out a um a couple a single like maybe like the, maybe the one before the, that one those, mm -hmm. and I was like, man, it's great, but. I had to like clean a couple songs up and I was just, and you were just like, yeah, I'm not even on that vibe anymore. And mm -hmm. since then you just, there was just, you didn't curse anymore. Not saying mm -hmm. you had a need to, but you were just like, I don't need to, I can work around that. Mm -hmm. Well, in the nineties, you didn't have to do it either, but you know, it was funny that um, it was new for everybody. It was an open playing field. And it was, you know, freedom of speech. You can say what you wanted to say, but our communities were, in, were intact at the time. So, but that was the beginning of the end. And right. uh, um, as I look at it, you know, that's why you never heard me talk about drugs or nothing, selling drugs or nothing in my, nah, man. Because dudes that really do that, don't talk about that. You know? Right. It's not really a, a, a conversation. It's not nothing to be proud of. Um, you know? That's just my my take. I don't I don't hate on nobody else. I don't talk down on nobody else. That ain't my game, you know. But that's just how I feel about it. All right. Okay. So um, I know you plan on making more music after this album. How did you come up with the name Organic Intelligence? Did it just come to you, or were you just thinking of well, that as a? Because when I thought of Organic Intelligence. I, it, it was like that song, it, the, the song, you know, made me really say that because, you know, everything came from us and where and how did we get it? It was organically. It was, mm -hmm. a, it, it's, an, it's like us hearing a, like I say, music is my religion, wood, skin and hands, create a perfect rhythm, make the whole world dance. That's organic intelligence. You know, you, you, you take the wood, you take the skin, you put over the wood, you beat on it. Next thing you know, people are moving. That's organic intelligence. Who thought of that? Exactly. Right. So that's that's how deep it is. So and it, it it goes deeper than that. It goes into you know I we can go on that forever. But <laughs> that's you know that's just the, the the layman's terms of it. Right. So I know you've been also making some house music too. So do you plan on making more house music? We've played your house music on our show. I've played it in my sets. Man, I got so much house music on on in 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 my little laboratory. You have no. I I went on a ramp a rant making house music. Cause now I'm gonna tell you how I got into house music. One of my good friends is a DJ. His name is D DJ Day Donnie from Uptown. And um, I used to me and DJ, me and Day Donnie used to hang out real tight a lot. So I used to go to the record store with him. He's take te take me back to the house and we'd be playing music. He said, "Man, Jeff, check this out." And at the time. You know, I'm a West Coast dude. So at the time, I, I, I really didn't know him. I, I had another boy that was from Detroit that was my good friend. He kept on telling me house music, house music. I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. But then when they died, let me hear it. I was like, whoa, okay. And what really turned me on was Pal Joey. I love jump, do, 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 do. So when I heard that, I was, I was just turned on to a whole different music. And I said, man, I like this music. And because I'm a musician, I can adapt, you know. And right. And I like Al Joy as well, too. So it made me be like, oh, OK, I can do this. So I just started making house music. I got so much stuff, right? Oh, I can't wait to give it to you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I got so much stuff. And I was a dancer. So, you know, I used to pop when I was younger, right? Way before rap music, when, when dudes would go around city to city popping against each other. I was one of them dudes. So uh -uh. because of that, I could feel the music in a certain way. And that's what makes me be able to make good dance music because I understand what it's doing. You know, some dudes make house music that can't dance. You know, right. and some dudes, the ones that make that good stuff, they actually can dance. You know, so that's for me. It's a dancing music, and it, it, it's gotten a little jazzy, a little look. You know, if you notice, my music ain't like that. I I, I want I want to get you up. You right. Know? So that's that's the whole thing about it, making you move. All right. So I look forward to getting your 
house music in the future, and we look forward to playing more of your music from the Organic Intelligence LP. You know, thanks very much. I appreciate the time that you took just to talk to me and talk about your new album. By the way, do you have any future plans? Anything else in the future besides house music? Um, yeah, well, I got uh, an instrumental album I'm going to do just okay. with just with some funky instrumentals. Um, and it's not going to be house. It's going to be you know different speeds, but pretty much laid back. It's going to be adult. I call it, I think of my music as adult contemporary rap music because of, of me evolving as who I am. But this right. music, the musical musicality, I have so many tracks that I that don't deserve a rap and maybe not deserve a singer, but maybe deserve a saxophone player, or maybe deserve a live guitar solo, or maybe deserve a piano solo. So, you know, you know, and guys I like, like I'm, I'm a big Joe Sample fan, you know, right. RIP. You know, all those guys I listen to a lot, all the jazz guys that I listen to a lot. Roy Ayers is a big influence of mine. So if you, oh, as a matter of fact, grown folks ride music, that's like a Roy Ayers type of sound. And right. that, that's, that's what I'm influenced by. So when I, this instrumental record would be like that. And it's a lot of guys like Robert Glasper. I would love to work with him. There's a lot of guys I want to work with, you know, so. Right. Hopefully it comes to fruition. All right, I'm sure it will. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people that want to work with you too. So, <laughs> you know, with the, with the amount of music that you put out in the wide variety, I'm sure there's plenty of people that, I mean, good musicians want to work with other good musicians. So I'm sure I'm not going to hear the last of you. There's going to be more stuff coming in. I'm sure there's, there's just a lot more great stuff coming from you in the near future. I appreciate so, that, man. I really do I, appreciate I your coming. support. I really do. All right, so thanks again. Um, this is DJ Patrick Scientific. In the back, we got Clever Jeff. And um, Jeff, thank you so much. We're going to be playing your music on our show. And peace to everyone out there who listens to Audio Infusion. Oh, by the way, last thing, thank you for my shout-out in that song. Ah. <laughs> rock, rock on. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you said DJ Scientific. I know I'm Patrick Scientific. There's a DJ in this area named DJ Scientific. So I'm sharing it with him, though, because I got love for him. He's a fantastic uh, DJ as well, too. I got love. If you got love for him, I got love for him, too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, brother, for real. All right, man. Hey, thanks so much, all right? Yes, sir. This is DJ Wish from the Audio Infusion. Thanks for listening to this audio interview. If you like what you heard, click the subscribe button below.